Today, it's all about the makeover. Don't go away. Hey everybody, it's Paul from Fat Guy Productions coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And yes, indeed, today is about the makeover. You see, I'm not a, a guy who takes... Okay, let me, let me show you something here. Let me show you this, okay? This is my little COE Dodge tow truck. I love this thing. Now, I thought it would be fun to redo it and instead of being Dodge, maybe make a fat guy tow truck or something like that. But I can't bring myself to do it because this is beautiful and it doesn't need anything, okay? I, I'm not tearing apart new cars just for the sake of tearing apart new cars. If I tear apart a new car, it's because it's ugly as hell or I've got a plan specifically for it. But generally speaking, my idea is to be bringing cars back to life not tearing cars down. What's the point if I tear one down to bring another one to life? It, it's kind of a wash. So I don't generally do that. Um, but in this case today, I have a car that, well, it's a beautiful die-cast car. It's a, uh, an M2 Barracuda uh, drag race car. And... Uh, Man, the detail and everything, it's just beautiful. It's spectacular. And then I went and slapped a bunch of silly Coke bottle ads on it all over the place. And, and really kind of killed it. Well, I have something better in mind. So I got it. And we're going to tear it up. And we're going to make it into something that I think is a lot better. So let's get right to it. All right. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this M2 Barracuda... Uh, with this ugly Coke paint job, and we're going to be turning it into a Sox and Martin uh, Barracuda. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Sox and Martin is a very famous drag race team. Uh, they they ran a lot of Dodges, uh, including uh, this style of Barracuda, and uh, so we're going to do a little conversion. Now, normally I don't like taking brand new cars uh, and taking them apart and doing stuff like this to them. But in this case, it's a really great car with an ugly paint job, and uh, I have a great plan to make it a lot of fun. So I think it's going to be really cool. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. So we'll go ahead and start by getting this car taken all apart. Uh, we'll remove the screw from the bottom and uh, pry the base off. And uh, just look at that. You know, look at the big fatty drag slicks on the back, man. This thing is ready to go. We just got to do something about the ugly paint job. Odd though, um, this is my second uh, M2 where I'm doing a, a facelift to it. Uh, you know, you I all remember the van from the Three Blind Mice uh, build. And uh, boy, it had a cupcake and a loaf of bread on the side of it. I, I don't know what they're thinking. Anyhow, very detailed, very, very detailed. Nice interior. Working doors, working hood, uh, a lot of stuff to this thing, you know. Uh, so taking it apart is is an adventure in and of itself. Uh, we've got to unscrew uh, the, the doors, and we've got to get the roof out or the the window glass out. Um, all the exterior features like the uh, the bumpers and the uh, uh, tail lights and all of that stuff. So we got our work cut out for us here. Now these uh, higher detailed cars, if you've never taken one apart, um, a lot of the stuff is uh, fit into the uh, the casting. Uh, you know, like the detail stuff, like the bumpers, uh, for example. They're they're fit in with a couple pegs, and then I, I can't tell if they're heat. Uh, locked, it locked in with heat or with some sort of a glue or whatever, but there's usually a little peg there. And the only way to really get it off is to just kind of cut that, that um, melted peg away and uh, then just push what's left of the peg out of the hole uh, with some kind of a pokey pokey like I'm, I'm doing here. So, you know, just kind of 
scrape everything away until you have nothing left but the hole and push the little piece out. Be careful though, don't want to break anything. All right, I'll go ahead and finish getting all this stuff off of here and get this paint stripped off. And then I'll meet you over at the spray booth. All right, the, the body of this car is going to be painted white again. And uh, so we're going to go ahead and lay down some Tamiya uh, fine primer uh, in light gray. Uh, when you're painting white, you want to use the gray primer just so you can uh, see where you're putting the paint down when you start laying down the white. Um, so uh, a nice good coat of Tamiya fine primer and get it all smoothed out and ready for the paint. So while I'm priming the hood, it's a perfect time to tell you about the huge mistake I made. Uh, I didn't realize that the air scoop was a separate piece and more that it was plastic. So when I stripped the paint off of it, it actually damaged the scoop. And later in some of the shots, you'll be able to see inside the scoop and it looks all kind of weird and stuff. That's because it melted a little bit. Uh, I ended up having to sand it back down and, and shape it on the outside to uh, try and get it to look as good as it could look. But uh, uh, it is plastic, which caught me off guard and uh, I damaged it. So uh, I just made the best I could of it. With the uh, primer nice and dry, I'll go ahead and paint the car with a little Tamiya X2 gloss white. I'll thin it down with my X20 thinner and some drops of uh, Mr. Color self-leveling thinner and then apply it in my standard fashion with the uh, tack coats, medium coats, and then a nice glossy coat. And then we'll set it aside to dry. All right, with the white thoroughly dry, we can go ahead and start masking off the uh, sides of the car for the famous red panels of the Sox and Martin race team. The key to the masking is to just move slowly and steadily and make sure that the tape is burnished down well. And believe you me, I have reference photos of the car right there while I'm doing this to make sure I get the panel right. Oh, and did I forget to mention the joy of having to do this twice, getting it on both sides? Honestly, it's not that difficult. Uh, once you've got one side done, just remember as you're doing the other side to be consistent about looking back to the other side and make sure you're mimicking it, uh, you know, accurately. If it's uh, just a little bit off, nobody's really going to be able to notice. But if you're substantially off, uh, the car is just going to look wonky and you might not know why, but it's going to feel all wrong and you're going to hate the work. So... Uh, make sure you're looking back at the other side often and comparing it to the, the side that you're currently working on. All right, once we have the car completely masked off, we can take a little uh, Tamiya gloss red and we'll mix it down using our X20 and our self-leveling thinner. And then we'll very, very lightly apply it to the car, building it up slowly until we get the coverage that we're looking for. If you put it on too thick and too heavy, you're going to end up with runs and little fingers underneath the tape. So this is one time you're definitely not going to want to put it on in a thick coat. Once applied, and as soon as we have the airbrush cleaned, I like to go ahead and get the tape off. Now, you'll notice as I take the tape off, I'm pulling it into and at a fairly sharp angle into the freshly painted uh, red. This helps kind of cut the line off. 
So go slow, work methodically, be careful not to get paint on your fingers and then touch the car. You know, you can make a real mess out of this because, yeah, it's a little tacked over, but it's still really fragile at this point. So very, very careful is the word. All right, it's coming along pretty good. It looks really great. Um, but we still have an entire another color to paint onto this thing. So we're going to have to make sure that this dries completely thoroughly. Uh, I will bake it to make sure it's uh, thoroughly dry. And then I will still even let it sit for another two or three days because I'm going to have to mask over this and all sorts of other stuff. And I don't want to goof right. it up. So we've got everything cleaned up, and uh, we can touch it just enough to look at it and admire our handiwork. So far, so good. All right, so now we're going to uh, mask off the roof of the car to paint the uh, uh, the trademark blue roof of the Sox and Martin Rice team. And in this case, as I am wont to do when I'm painting uh, the top surfaces of the car, uh, I'll just tape it down onto a cardboard uh, piece. This uh, reduces the amount of tape that has to touch the car body and reduces the chances of me screwing up the sides of the body. So I've got it taped down and masked off, and I took it over and mixed, it, uh, uh, mixed up a little gloss blue uh, with my Tamiya paints, thinned it down, and sprayed it again very, very lightly until I got the coverage that I wanted cleaned my mess up and now we can go ahead and start peeling away the masking tape and see what we have. Yes, uh, Ronnie Sox and Buddy Martin certainly made a name for themselves uh, with their prowess behind the wheel, but the cars were just so iconic with this uh, red, white, and blue look that they had on them. Uh, when, when they showed up, everybody knew it because there was no mistaking one of their cars. Well, with the hard part in the books, it looks like we can start to turn our attention towards applying the decals. All right, courtesy of my uh, my friend Vince over at Second Chance Redlines, we got ourselves a nice set of Sox and Martin decals to put on our car. Um, his decal set includes both... Uh, uh, full side panels if you want to go that way or if you want to paint yours you can paint it and he includes all of the stuff that goes into the red panels as a separate decal so that's the way I'm gonna go with this okay so for the decaling it's the standard board affair make sure that the car is 180 percent completely thoroughly dry make sure you have a nice glossy finish if you have a, a rough or a matted finish you're going to get silvering under the decals, and they're just going to look horrible. So once we've got that done, we can go ahead and uh, dip the decal in a little water to break it loose from the backing paper. And while it's doing that, we'll put down a little uh, uh, liquid on the car itself, and then we can slide the decal over onto the car and position it. Now, if you're having a decal that's having trouble sticking to the car, you can use a, a, a setting solution to help, help it kind of stick down. And then if you have a car where you're putting the decals over a lot of texture, then you can use a, uh, a softening agent 
to soften them and allow them to conform to the shape of the body. In my case, I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, a Walther Salva set on the car to help the decals kind of uh, form to any uh, nooks or crannies or patterns in the car itself. And once applied, just be sure not to touch them until they're dry. They're going to become very, very fragile for a short while. You go ahead and touch them, you're probably going to screw them up. The car is going to require a lot of decals, but it's going to be worth it in the end. And we're going to have this beautiful little 164 scale model of a really iconic race team. When you have a, a, a smaller model with this many decals on it, don't be afraid to do it in a couple sessions, okay? You know, maybe do one side, then let it sit and dry before you get to the other side so you don't risk screwing it all up. But there you have it. Uh, the, the, the crux of the, uh, the build, the, the iconic Sox and Martin paint job and uh, logos. All right, so we can go ahead and set this aside to dry. And once it's completely dry, we will protect the paint and bury the decals in a little bit of the uh, uh, clear coat from Bright Vision. Uh, it's a urethane clear coat. It's the same stuff I use on my red lines. And it is going to give me just an amazing glossy finish. And it's going to lock everything together. Okay, so we're about ready to be able to start putting this car back together. And I'm not a big fan of gluing things together, but on these M2s, we had to kind of cut off the back side of, of the, the posts that go through the body. And so we don't really have a lot of choice. So using uh, one of my medicine trays, uh, a.k.a. from the tip I gave you in uh, last month's live stream, I'm going to put a little uh, puddle of medium viscosity uh, super glue and with a toothpick I'm going to take some and I'm going to apply it into each uh, recess and then I can go ahead and put the part in. It's imperative that you do a test fit before you put the glue in otherwise you're going to go and try and stick this part in here and it's not going to go in right. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to get glue on everything. So do a test fit, take the piece back out again once you know it's okay, then put the glue in the little hole, and then put the part in permanently. It's at about this point where I always get just super crazy excited about these things. Uh, I've got all the, the glued-in pieces in, the glasses in. I'm dropping the base back down. No need to drill or anything like that. Just put the uh, provided screw back into the hole, and we are almost done with this build. All right, we got it buttoned down, and now we can go ahead and take a look at the finished product. I hope you like it as much as I do. The Sox and Martin Barracuda.
All right, there it is, my Sox and Martin Barracuda. And I'll tell you what, I think it came out fantastic. And it is going to be in a place of honor in my collection. Because, uh, you know, like I said, I'm a Mopar guy. And so this car, this is one of the, the most famous Mopars out there, along with Heavy Under Glass and, and uh, um, uh, uh, the Dodge Daytona and, and all of that. So... Uh, this this is a, 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 a an amazing car, and I think the model came out really, really cool. I had a lot of fun doing it. Okay, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, click the little bell, and you'll be notified anytime I release a new video. If you have any questions or comments, ask them down below. I love to talk with you guys. I really do read all the comments, and I try and respond to as many as humanly possible. All right, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Today, we're going to have a really super fast kind of drag racing kind of day. We're going to just go, go, go. It's going to be great. So get pumped up and let's hit this thing running, okay? It's going to be fantastic. All right, I'm going to get out of here. Till next time, be good.